British forces joined the action in Libya from the very beginning. UK submarines and fighter jets carried out multiple strikes against Gaddafi forces. We get more on this from our correspondent in London, Laura Emmett. Hello, Laura. So what's been the public reaction to the, uh, in Britain to the government's decision to engage in military operations in North Africa? I think what we heard before this started and what has actually happened now, there's quite a big difference both in what's actually happened and in, in the perception of that. A no-fly zone sounds to your man on the street like a relatively low-key thing. Uh, it just sounds like people won't be allowed to take, take off planes. But, of course, I think what people didn't fully understand was that in order to stop Gaddafi's planes taking off, one would actually have to shoot them down. And certainly what we've seen so far in this military intervention, and we should remember that this is only just the beginning, is... Over 100 uh, cruise missiles fired. Uh, the U.S. have dropped 40 conventional bombs on Libya. Uh, the U.K. alone, they have fired land missiles launched from submarines, which are currently stationed off the coast of Libya. And we've also seen bombing from the sky from tornado jets, which were flown all the way from the U.K. Uh, in what are being called the longest-range bombing missions since the, sec uh, since the Falklands War. Sorry. Uh, and the Libyan government is already coming out and saying that there were at least 60 civilian casualties casualties sustained during those attacks. And there have been a range of reactions in the UK uh, because of that. Obviously, we've seen the usual suspects come out. The Stop the War Coalition says that the Tomahawk missiles, which have been used, are not, in fact, precision guided weapons, and they'll cause a lot of civilian casualties. Uh, they also say that uh, they're very critical of the UN resolution. They say that it's begun as it will continue with full-scale uh, military assault on the Libyan people, and that the end result will be not the freedom of the Libyan people and and, the, and their, their democracy, but in fact their enslavement by the Western world as a result of this. CND, the Campaign for Nuclear Disarmament, has also come out and said it deeply regrets the government's decision to get involved militarily in Libya. Uh, it says that the last 10 years of interventionist wars in that very region have taught uh, the UK government nothing at all. And in general, I think people are saying on the street, why are we going to Libya when we're not going to other places that are seeing large-scale civilian casualties uh, caused by government? and civil war. Uh, we, we're seeing a lot of casualties, thousands of casualties in the Ivory Coast, uh, where, of course, their main export is not oil, but in fact cocoa. Uh, and there, there's also been a, an extremely serious situation going on in some years in Somalia. Uh, and, and the situation continues there to be very volatile. Again, no intervention from, from the UK or from the US. And, of course, uh, given the general economic backdrop that we see here, people are talking a lot about the cost of war. They have heard their government saying repeatedly over a series of months, we have got no money. We've got no money for pensions, we've got no money for public sector wages, uh, for higher education, the cost of which has gone up by, uh, by threefold. And yet the government has seemed to be willing to get involved in yet another war, seemingly at the drop of a hat. Uh, and even after defence cuts have been made in the UK, uh, William Hague, the uh, foreign minister, has come out and said that there will still uh, be, the, have, the UK will still have the fourth largest military capability in the world. Also, the UK population are very worried about mission creep, as it's become known. Uh, we've seen it in Iraq and Afghanistan, of course, two wars that the that UK troops are still involved in and have been involved in for roughly the last uh, 10 years. The goal there, again, was to establish stability, much as it, much as it is, is here to uh, ensure the equal distribution of power, and that still hasn't happened in those two countries. So there is definitely a worry that we will go to Libya uh, and start military intervention there and just not, not be able to leave. For, for a period of years. David Cameron, the Prime Minister, is very anxious to assure people that this will be nothing like Iraq. He's calling this action necessary, legal and right. Uh, the Defence Secretary, Liam Fox, has also come out and said that uh, this was a very successful operation that was carried out on Saturday. But in what might prove uh, to be the first split in the coalition, we've heard President Obama repeatedly saying that he won't be sending ground troops, uh, but Chancellor George Osborne here in the UK has said that they're not planning to send ground troops at the moment. So it remains to be seen what comes of that. Other cracks, of course, we've already heard that the Arab League, which supported a no-fly zone, uh, is now coming out and saying that it's already displeased, that this is not a no-fly zone. In fact, this is the bombardment of civilians by Allied forces. There is certainly a fear here in the UK that this is just the beginning of this intervention. And again, there will be an anti-war demonstration here in London outside Downing Street on Sunday afternoon. Afternoon. So people are certainly coming out and saying that they're worried about this. All right, RT's Laura Emmett, live for us in London. Thanks for that report.